What's going on, everybody? I'm Tom. I'm Pat. And I'm Zach. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. They say you can't choose your family. Well, you also can't choose which era of music you grew up in. This is a weekly show where we discuss our favorite bands from adolescence and how they continue to shape our lives today. Each week, we'll head back to the early 2000s and take a closer look at the cards we were dealt. Good morning, Pat. How are you now? (laughs) Oh, I'm good there, bud. How are you? Oh, not so bad. (laughs) Good. So, before we get into this episode, there's a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, Very important, but very exciting stuff, so stick around for the next few 90 seconds before we get into the... We're going back to the well. Yeah, I I don't know the... There's a line of... There's a long line of requests, but (laughs) Tom's been working overtime, and he said, can we just please do something about Taylor Swift? And I (laughs) did not fight him very hard at all on that, so... Uh, yeah, I'm doing I don't, the Taylor Swift draft. I don't, I don't, well, it's kind of like an anti draft ultimate greatest hits mixtape compilation extravaganza. I still want to do, make it a head to head thing, but we'll lay out the rules later. Let's okay. get to housekeeping. <laughs> okay, housekeeping. So we have a huge interview with a very, very special guest for next Friday that I'm super excited about. Honestly, can't believe that it's happening. And kind of the reason we're doing a draft this week as well, because we want to prime our regular listeners to <laughs> for that mindset. Yeah, we're doing the 2002 mixtape draft next week with a very special guest. And then in two weeks, I am flying out to Las Vegas to do an interview for a bonus episode of this podcast. That's kind of even crazier than what we're doing next week. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. $70 flights to Vegas. Why not? We are also still collecting voice memos for the Reputation Redemption episode. A few more are coming in. Got some people on Reddit and Facebook involved. Very excited. That'll be a bonus, right? It won't be one of the weekly ones, but we'll pop it just for all of you. Yeah. You know, I've been wanting to do monthly bonus episodes where we bring in either like collaborate with you know listeners or people on social media or we have interviews we're still trying to figure out exactly how that's going to go down it's not going to be like a a paid like patreon thing or anything just like a bonus episode once a month because you know as i quit my job at tesla i'll have a little bit of extra time so why not fill it up immediately with more work we're just going to scoot past the part where tom might have a problem (laughs) (laughs) keep it churning baby and then and then maybe the biggest of all announcements, the the longest arc that's followed this podcast so far, I believe. You want to take this one, Pat? Other than our actual nuptials, I think, um, which was a big part of it. Uh, not to be overshadowed, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, the goofy, silly book that has come to be, Ron Carnage, Thinker Boy, is coming out on March 15th. It's Are we club horning it? Because yeah. that seals it. Let's do it. And I don't, I don't, okay, go ahead. Just more club horns. Do a second (laughs) round of club horns. All right, here we go. All right, yeah, it's all very exciting. But no, yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. Um, I think it's what ended up at 32,000 words or something, so a nice quick airplane read. And uh, it is very silly and fun, and we've had a blast, and we have the cover art, and we have a map. And we have a story, and it is going to be, I think, on pre-order, just a couple bucks for the for the ebook version. So, it's it's all very exciting. More details to come. Pre-orders probably will be out this week, I guess, right? Pro- or maybe by the available. time the episode's out, actually, yeah. Ooh, well, keep an eye out on the at underscore reminiscent FM Twitter feed, or find Tom on Facebook and friend him because Tom Kelly loves you. <laughs> Which is a big throwback to, to MySpace. <laughs> yeah. Which I honestly love that. It's a very positive uh, message. Anyway, uh, it's also true, which is nice. So Tom always thinks I'm making fun of him, but I actually really enjoyed that that project he had going. Anyway, um, yeah, it'll be the, the Friday right before St. Patrick's Day this year. Uh, the world kind of takes place in the Celtic land of sorts. And anyway, we've, we've talked about that ad nauseum on this show. So today's about Taylor Swift drafting her songs, and getting you guys ready for the 2002 draft with our special guest next week, which will be a must-listen for sure. 
Yeah, definitely. That's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. I think it should still be eight, an eight song thing versus an eight song thing. I don't want to do a collaborative thing. I think the fun of it is that it's me versus you at the end of the day. And I think we should go one song per album and then get two bonus ones at the end. Can we steal from each other or what's the deal? Mm, ooh, two bonuses and one steal at the very end where we swap. I don't know. I, I kind of like the Because what I might thing. do is just draft picture to burn so you can steal that from me later so I know not to. Oh, you f- <laughs> <laughs> It's already getting heated, folks. Uh, <laughs> what are the rules? I think we go one song per album. And then there's two round bonus rounds at the end where we pick two other songs from any album. And then at the end, if you want to steal, you can. Or what What if the wild, card, wild cards are a steal or pick an extra one? Ooh, interesting. Steal or pick an extra. I can. I, I dig it. I, I, li- I like where this is headed. Keeping it contentious between friends. That's what this <laughs> show is all about. So, uh, all right. So yeah, the rules wanna... changed three times before recording and once during. So, <laughs> right. Just want we just want to get it right here. So what we're gonna do? We're each gonna pick one song from an album to draft for our own mixtape. Yeah. And then at the end, we can either pick another song from any album or steal. That round goes twice. Yeah. Okay. Should we roll the dice? You should. Uh, this turned into a it... totally different thing. I thought it would be collaborative and friendly. <laughs> no, dude. You. <laughs> It's your show, and you don't even know. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Roll, roll uh, as many sided dice as you can find, so that um, I'm going to say it's the number is going to be under thirty. It's, I'm rolling a D six. All right. D's, okay. I, I, I'm going to pick four. What? You don't pick the number? What are you talking? About? You bet your ass. I'm going to pick the number. All right. I'm rolling for you. Damn it! It's a six. Ooh. I told you before. And I'm a five. God. Okay, you go first. Yeah, that's, a, that's a tough, five's a tough one to lose on. Right. It's, <laughs> luck was uh, was not your lady tonight for sure. So <sighs> um, I guess we'll just have to start with uh, the self-titled, is it? In yes. 2006? Which I've been listening to so much lately and... Ugh. Which is my least favorite. Oh, you can continue. Oh, no, it's just, it's so good and like... What's really upsetting about going back and listening to her older albums is that my sister listened to them a lot when I was, you know, when we were young. Yeah. And I didn't hate it, but I was like, you know, kind of just getting into like the pop punk scene and was like weirdly elitist for a 14 year old and was like, oh, Taylor (laughs) Swift, she's popular. So it's so lame. And like now I'm going back and like falling in love with the album over again without like that embarrassment that like a 15 year old would have and yeah. i'm just fucking loving it dude <laughs> like, absolutely yeah. loving it you even texted me picture to burn the other day um the other day uh sorry you got me on this letter kitty kick i can't stop yeah <laughs> um funny show but okay you're listening to picture to burn the other day <laughs> looking at me here with your buds coming out anyway uh, I'm going to have to, you're going to have to take 10 to 20% off it there, bud. Um, <laughs> let's go with, I, I wish you would have won because these first few albums, let's say, I don't really like our song, so I'm going to say Tim McGraw. Okay. Is that the one you actually want or are you doing me a favor <laughs> right now? Well, I'm not here to slit your throat and rip your organs out of your <laughs> open socket and hold them in front of your face. Like, you know, this doesn't have to be a total carnage, but I'm going to go Tim McGraw mostly because... Yeah, I don't know. The pick is in, man. <laughs> Use it to your advantage. <laughs> also, what's weird is she's from Pennsylvania, so some of these first albums, like the twanginess of all of it is, I don't know if it, the word funny is correct, but it's, it, I think there's a period of finding her own here, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Central Pennsylvania is kind of twangy, though. So. <laughs> it's true. They don't nickname it Pennsylvania for nothing. Right. But... <laughs> King of my heart might as well be the king of Prussia Mall. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead and get so, some water ice. Yeah, this was this was hard because Mary's song, Oh My My My, is very good. But Picture to Burn has been on repeat for like two days. Um, in my headphones, in the car, in the work van. You've been rocking it. It's been your it's been your tune of 2019, I'd say. <sighs> Maybe. And you know, what's funny is you know, I, I've sang in bands and stuff, and I've never been able to, like, scream or do that, like, scream singing type deal. Right. And I was driving 
fucking forever away for work on Saturday. Driving's a good spot for it. it. Yeah. So I'm driving and like something just clicked. All of a sudden I can do not like screaming like a metal core, but like kind of that yell singing. And like I was singing along to Taylor Swift, right? Picture to burn. And it was just coming out. And I was trying to pay attention to like what's going on in my throat. And I was like, oh my God, it clicked. I can do this now. And then like I haven't been able to do it since. <laughs> so like <laughs> It's driving me crazy, but yeah. uh, I keep listening to the song again and trying to sing along to get that that voice back because I really do want to record like a thirteen song cover album of my favorite Taylor Swift songs as pop punk songs, and I would love to do "Picture to Burn" because it's a fucking bop. I love it. So our song goes undrafted off of the first uh, <sighs> first album. I do remember that was huge with people in our grade. Yes, so we were right. Like, yes. in the middle of the wheelhouse for exactly who those songs were for at the time. Um, but, yeah, I think Tim McGraw, yeah, I think it was like, anyway, I'm sticking with it. This is still trying, we're trying to make the best Taylor his Swift greatest hits records, right, head to head. Yeah. In the spirit of the competition. I think you get the first pick off Fearless. This is hard because Fearless is so good, like the song, yeah. and I am working on a cover of that right now that's coming out really well but the way i loved you whew, chills man every time ooh, and the way ooh. she says love with that kind of country oh, i have dude. to ask are you wearing the bomber jacket right now <laughs> no <laughs> no but i am wearing it to the podcast expo, expo in march and i'm stoked nice, nice. i was <laughs> I, gonna say because you were going with some pretty deep cuts here i was like he's got, he's channeling every inch He's got number 13 written in a uh, pen on his hands and stuff. <laughs> or a one on his one hand and a three on the other. You know, I, I was trying to plan out my Taylor Swift tattoo and uh, I already oh, have a 13. Oh, this is news. Uh, I mentioned it before, but I already have a 13 tattooed on me, so I might just call that my Taylor Swift tattoo. <laughs> well, hey, there you go. It was destined to be. Oh, that's really hard. I might, yeah, I might have to go with Fearless. Hmm. Um, because that's another one that I put on repeat and again, you know, I'm trying to write this cover of it and actually decided rather than our normal music, that's what I'm going to open and close the reputation redemption episode with. So I really got to get working on it. Um, it's good. Fearless is honestly, I want to say every one of her albums is probably her best album, (laughs) but (laughs) fearless is like front to back incredible absolutely incredible so yeah i'm gonna go with a single title track for your list okay i'm gonna go with you belong with me i think Ooh. if you look at some of those earlier oh. tours with the marching band yes. uh, high school aesthetic i i think that's a one of her in her catalog like one of the main uh heavy hitting hits there um short skirts and t-shirts and bleachers and and the like so uh yeah that's to me that's an easy pick you left it on the board so um, that's a really good pick. That's a really good pick. Well, I, thank you, Tom. See, this doesn't have to be contentious. There's <laughs> <laughs> so many songs to go around that this is. there's no reason for any of this to... Okay, so You Belong With Me, I remember just like listening to my, my sister played it a lot. But then I, I... God, didn't... Again, way too late realized how incredible that song was. And I was watching the music video. Have you ever watched Blue Mountain State? No, more than one person has recommended it oh. to me, but I just never have. I've seen the fake commercial for the college on YouTube, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, ah, this is, ah, I don't know. I just never have. I, I don't I don't know how to explain it. I just never have tried to get into it. Okay. It's, I'm sure it's very funny. I, I just haven't. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite shows, but I guess kind of a minor character in season two. Um, <laughs> he's like a prospective... Uh, high school recruit for the team that he's called golden arm and um he is the the love interest in you belong with me oh so, there's a nice little uh, tidbit for you <laughs> yeah i thought that was funny i was i was like golden arm oh my god <laughs> like super young making out with taylor swift my god um <laughs> also it took me way too long to realize the girl with the black hair in the video is taylor swift in a wig <laughs> that's hey man it's the costume designer should get a freaking Grammy. I was like, she looks super familiar. <laughs> like, for, and also, for Grammys for music. Uh, we're having a rough morning here, folks. Uh, <laughs> but that brings us to... Oh, you know what was interesting about You Belong With Me? And like, kind of how Taylor Swift 
ended up taking over pretty much everything. So <laughs> our song, like I remember hanging out with Mark Valentin and his girlfriend Sam Learn and some of that crew over by Steve Buckland's house. I was like, okay, our song. I could see like, you know, it's popular. I could see these people going to a country concert and like enjoying it, all that. But then like I remember Marie Machina and some of those like Hannah Hannah's friends were singing You Belong With Me and Jam into Fearless when it came out. By the time we were in high school, I was like, okay, something's different. Like this is a vastly larger audience. So, <laughs> yeah. um, like, oh sh this this is a meteoric rise for sure. You know, if they got Marie, then we're all screwed. So. I remember my sister. Yeah, I know. Like, those are the cool kids singing Taylor Swift. Right. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> well, the thing is, we were driving to in college to see uh, the rally to restore sanity. And you or a sister or you let us stay at your place. Mm -hmm. uh, back when John Stewart and Stephen Colbert did that rally. Um, 09, 2010, maybe? 2010, but I think. Or 11. One of, the person, one of the people in the car with us, his name was Noah. And he said... Uh, we were having a debate, you know, just college type debate about who the voice of our generation was. And, he was, and we were still like fearless or speak now era, uh, pre-read, of course. And he was like Taylor Swift and he wouldn't budge. And we were all like, is it Kanye? Is it T Taylor? Like that was kind of like the debate in the car. And with a few other at the time, whoever was hot at the time. But um, <laughs> years later, everyone has just so begrudgingly like hated the fact that they had to admit that Noah was right like at the time like, he made <laughs> such a fantastic call that it is almost certainly her and for him to have at at the point he had like posters of her in his uh, dorm room and stuff and so we knew he was like a total Swifty we, uh, <laughs> Swifty is that what it that's would be that's the word um, yep <laughs> and the official nomenclature so um, <laughs> but like we knew he was just speaking from a fanboy standpoint but the fact that he was so utterly and decisively correct at, like way before it would have been like perfectly clear to everyone has always upset all of us who were in the car that day so <laughs> that's so funny but yeah that brings us to speak now i guess the speak now era um when some of those songs would have been coming out i think it's i think it's your first your, your, your selection my boy well i went first on fearless fine it's me and i'll take december Whew, okay <laughs> yeah that's right that music video is hilarious to me because I just picture her in rural Pennsylvania walking through an open field, that random dude with like <laughs> the straightened emo black hair to his shoulder or whatever. Just like a super Pennsylvania scene, like not wearing an appropriate coat or a hat or gloves, just being outside. <laughs> Probably headed to the high school's basketball game or something, just like upset about a crush. Like, I should have brought gloves. I'm pissed at my parents. Pennsylvania stuff. I don't know. <laughs> just like the lamest, most dramatic, but also really good song. I think she was definitely in Nashville by this point, right? <laughs> I know, but I just picture that kid walking through some field in PA all emotional, like, damn it, this is so rough. <laughs> Speak Now doesn't wow me as an album, but Whoa. there are some very good songs on it. Um, I think I, she's beginning to come into her own here, unless you say Fearless was the better record altogether. <sighs> well, Fearless was f***ing good. God damn it. Yeah, I hate this. I hate everything. Shut it down. We're, the episode is over. It's over. Fearless as a record wins, but what Fearless does not have is Enchanted and Long Live, which are just like fucking anthems, right? Whoa. Which is also weird that I'm not going to pick either of those. I was going to say, you've mentioned Long Live to me before. I'm yeah. actually curious because I just, this is like the easiest draft ever because I just get to pick the hits and you get to just pick the songs that you uh, <laughs> have scribbled into the insides of your uh, bomber jacket. So, um, uh, and for the record, those who haven't listened all the way through, Tom had bought the rainbow bomber jacket she wears from the Witch Tour, 1989, 1989 tour. World Tour. It's, it's shiny, it's rainbowy, it's glamorous. It's and sequins, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a great jacket. I actually emailed the company the other day. Uh, the other day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're emailing Taylor Swift's jacket maker company. Like, How are you now? Good and you? Oh, not so bad. <laughs> so they didn't have a medium, so I bought a large and, you know, I feel more comfortable in tight clothes. So I emailed them like, hey, if I bought a small and it fits better, can I return the large? Because they're like $160 and I can't own two. Um, but I might own two soon. I don't know. <laughs> hey, man, it's it's your world. We're all just living in it. <laughs> it's a dope jacket. Or it's Taylor's world. We're all just living in it. It's hard to see. Right. <laughs> I might have to go with mine, which is, again, the title track. Mm -hmm. Or not title track, opening track um it's a damn good song it was really... one of the two i had written for this album that i would have picked I, I wrote down two of my favorites for all of these and i saw i was prepared to pick whatever you didn't pick but i'm <laughs> glad you picked mine because it is a i'm not going to sit here and steal your description but it's a bop it's it's so good and the music video is incredible like uh, 
she's not the best actress, but she does well in that video. And she's like, you know, suffering at this day job. And it's just so relatable. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, You Belong um, With Me was a good music video, I would say. Oh, but I do think if you were good. speaking in general terms, the music videos get drastically better over time. I think perhaps obviously. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, the As first budget's few, increased. Particularly December is just so it's it's cringe to me. For Back sure. to December. <laughs> Back to December. Yeah, there I just wrote go. the keywords down. Sorry. Okay. I'm not getting the I'm not getting the names of the songs correctly, and I apologize <laughs> to everyone listening for that. All right. That brings us to one of your Desert Island top five albums. Yeah. yeah. To me, this is this is right where everything She's starting to go pop. She's been in the wheelhouse for a couple albums, but she's really ready to like prove Noah right and become the voice of the generation. Like she's ready, ready to fucking explode onto the scene. Well, she's on the scene, off the scene, into the space. I don't know. Things are exploding. <laughs> but I picked last, so you get to go first. This will be interesting. Oh, this is so hard. This it is, is hard because to pick one so is hard. such a dumb exercise, and I hate you, and I hate this, and I hate everyone listening. Well, see, when I originally wanted this to be collaborative. You know, we'd be happy for each other for if we picked a song that we liked, that's great. And then we get another. S yeah, but that doesn't make for good radio, right? Uh, like, okay. see, this is the point where you're going to say something and I'm going to be very upset. No, this absolutely. Everyone... I promise you, because the obvious choice is all too well. Rolling Stones Ooh. rated it her best song out of all 160 or whatever. Oh, it is a fucking knifes you in the back and then drags it right down to your butt. You <laughs> have to die. But then there's State of Grace, which is as good of an album opener as. Are you just going to go through every world? song and tease me with every song? <laughs> but then there's also Begin Again, and then also Everything Has Changed, and also 22, <laughs> and also Never Ever Getting Back Together. Well, okay. We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together is the most pop punk Taylor Swift has ever been. And it's she even song. plays guitar on this song on the, uh, in concert. Is that her best music video? Can we just do that quick aside? With that creepy band of like human sized furries, animals. I mean, they are furries in the video. They would become later to be, to be known that. But the guitar player is just has that creepy, wide eyed smile going the whole time. Very off putting, but. I don't remember it. Oh, God. Go on. Put it in the show notes, man. There is a guy playing guitar in that music video who stares into the camera and doesn't blink for like three <laughs> minutes. And uh, she's going through all these costume changes. Obviously, the look half hipster pseudo hipster look with the glasses and like you know this and that um it is uh haunting because you can only look at the guitarist the whole time somehow he's wearing <laughs> this like lion costume probably if someone was trying to dress up like the the courage lion from wizard of oz or something for halloween is the type of aesthetic and he's just like really flamboyantly playing and bopping and it's probably intentional but it is nightmares nightmare fuel for sure so uh, but it might be her best music video because it's one of those things where they do it in one shot so oh. it's cool. I like it. I don't think I've seen it. How did I? Well, she has so many music videos. I get lost in YouTube. You should watch it. You should watch it. It's 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 good. Possibly her best. No, well, no, because people would come in and say that Bad Blood or, um, no, not Bad Blood. Well, that is a good music video. Although Ready for it's a good one too. But the one where she smashes the car windshield with a golf club. What's that one? Blank space. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's probably the best one, just considering everything. Like, there was an actual cinematic effort. But it, I think very good. Get it together is just a very lovely music video. Anyway, I'm stalling because you could pick any of these songs and I'd be upset with you no matter what. So I think rhythm. you're going to be fine if I pick 22, right? Oh, yeah. I think okay. So. Because, again, it's like it's pop punk AF. <laughs> um, <laughs> True. It's so fun. I requested it at my mom's wedding, and Ooh. all the young kids danced for a change rather than Ooh, nice. DJ playing Tom up all the, the seventy songs. But it's just like it's super good. I remember watching a bunch of her live performances, and it, I mean, it just looks like she has so much fun with this song. And if when I do my my Taylor Swift cover band, this will be one of our hits for sure. Well, I will say this: when our song came out in two thousand six. Everyone we were at that age was just like, this is definitely how we view relationships. I think we all literally turned 22 the year 22 came out because she's <laughs> our age. So just like, damn it, she's done it again. Yeah, so. Also, as we mentioned, when she was on the uh, Reputation tour that we did an episode on, you can check it out. Uh, we also did a review of the album episode if you want to check that out. But she was mentioning that she wanted every song she ever wrote, no matter how poppy, to be able to be just played with her and a guitar and... Yes. 22 is definitely one of those, even though it, yeah, f damn, 22 is really good, though. I am still kind of mad, but you had to pick something. It's very good. 
It is quite good. These are our Taylor Swift takes, everybody. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> so, do you think the song 22 off of Red is good, old chap? Yes, I do. Uh, as do I. As do I. <laughs> All right, what do you got? That's what's tough. For the spirit of the draft itself, so far I have Tim McGraw, You Belong With Me, December. I'm gonna, I don't, if I keep going all of our sad songs, it's going to be a shitty greatest hits. <laughs> so I'm going to pick Never Ever Getting Back Together. Okay, but okay. I want to say that it's very hard for me not to pick the following three songs. All Too Well, of course. Oh, dude. That's the one with the refrigerator, refrigerator light, right? Yeah, which, like, that line is probably one of the greatest, like, sentences in American history. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort much? Jesus Christ. It's like, that is, a, that's like, it's like, she's doing Julian Baker better than Julian Baker does Julian Baker. You know, she's like <laughs> lying on the floor being sad about stuff, not moving for a while type, type <laughs> and so on. Uh, begin again. Such a sweet. What's weird about it, Red, and I can go... Uh, we should, I'll just talk about Red for the rest of the episode. Okay. Um, <laughs> is the last, like, five songs are... She could have started with those five. You know, and it's just like, damn it, it's, it's not even waning. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's that Snow Patrol song that's kind of dumb, but it's still great somehow. Anyway, Begin Again, everything has changed. Say what you want about Ed Sheeran, but um, he wasn't famous or considered a douche yet, so uh, <laughs> it was just a dude with a nice, pleasant-sounding British voice, and it's a good duet. Uh, so those are my three that are tough not to pick. But in the spirit of this draft and competing with Tom, because we wanted to make this contentious, I'm going to stick with never, ever getting back together. Yeah, it's very good, man. It's very good. That whole album is good. I mean, front to back. Like, uh, she's she's really, like, nailing the pop star who can who doesn't just write four singles. She writes entirely great albums. It was a distinct look change, too, right? I mean... There was no more like total frizzy, huge country hair. You know, there were hats <laughs> right. and glasses and uh, things like that. Like, it was, there was a distinct stylistic change uh, aesthetically, of course. You know, it's funny watching her old music videos. She actually looks older when she's 17 because they just plastered makeup on her and made her hair so big and was basically just doing like making her into a Kelly Pickler lookalike. It's funny. It seems like she aged backwards a little bit. Would you bit. go as far as to say as she became Taylor Swift on the Red Album, Tom? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I fair think enough. that's totally fair to say. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it was just drastic where the frizzy hair go, oh, shit, I don't care. All these songs are amazing. This is just new and fun, and let's get it. <laughs> Pitter-patter, let's get at her. Right. <laughs> Pitter-patter. Um, uh, 1989. Now oh. we're in a new realm. Now we're getting to the... I mean, this is just different stuff altogether, right? Like, Fearless and Speak Now. It's kind of interesting because now, hopefully after Reputation, we just get a pair of albums that are different sounding and cool. Maybe there'll be ebbs and flows to the whole thing because, again, still so young as we've talked about on previous episodes. But um, now we're entering into the duo of Total total Pop, right? Yeah. 1989 and Reputation. Yeah. I think it's my turn to go first. Yes. I'm going to say that I hate that I can't pick style, but I got to go with Wildest Dreams. Oh. Just because of that one acoustic version that she played. Uh, yeah, at the one. Grammy, whatever. Yeah. It was just, it's such a good song. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, style yeah. was great, though, because of the guitar work. And the music video used the True Detective intro stuff where they, like, will do a silhouette of one thing and yeah. play a scene out within it. It's just, uh, damn, that's a good music video, too. Double anyway, exposure. Sorry, I'm yeah. stepping on your toes here. Someone on Reddit did a really good painting of that, kind of like the uh, the nature scene or whatever it was through the silhouette of her head and face and shoulders. Um, I just felt weird seeing her head. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's cool if you say it yed, like the Reliant K singer or something, or something. You mean Blink-182? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, God, that's this is hard because it... This is one of my favorite, probably my top three favorite album, maybe two three. So of this all is one time? of your Desert Island albums. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh, okay. Um, so this is news because the first time we did the Desert Island episode, you had Moose Blood on there and shit, and it was recency bias and it yes. was dripping with misinformation. And yes. we should do that again sometime now that once Zach fixes his computer. Which I was totally aware of in the moment. <laughs> I think I even right. mentioned right. there's yeah, probably like, a reason. I misunderstood bias. the rules entirely. Like, are we just visiting the island? Like, no, you're stuck there. You got to do this forever. <laughs> you're like, oh, sh-. Moose blood's okay. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> also, quick tidbit. Somebody commented on Instagram after we did that, and they're like, is Pat okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> After our Desert Island episode, because of the albums I had chosen, uh, which I am, I think. But it was just like one of the best moments I have of doing this show with you. With someone being like, <laughs> to actually checking in on our well-being. <laughs> yes, it's hard. This is really, really hard because there's like... Yeah, why are we doing this? Four. Um, I, you know, I don't think it's the best song and I don't think it, it should be the first one that I pick on here, but I might have to go with Shake It Off just because that song gets yeah. me more hyped than any other song in the world. There's, and and if, you, if music isn't here to get us hyped, then what the hell are we doing? Yeah. Man, it sucks that style didn't get chosen. A lot well, of I mean, we have our, our two wild cards. If you would have picked Welcome to New York, I would just play club horns for 50 minutes until the episode's <laughs> over. I would have been like, that's right, this was a long con, everybody, and then play uh, Never Gonna Give You Up at the end of those club horn 50 minutes. <laughs> just, that's a really good song, too, though. <laughs> yeah, is it, though? Is it? We don't have to just drip, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't, I'm not sure it is there. All right. Let's... Um... Ooh, reputation. We both kind of gave this lukewarm review. So what do we? I'm glad you get to go first because I kind of want to see what direction you take this in. Let's let's recap our our uh, mixtapes thus far, and I'll go after you. All right, we got Tim McGraw and Picture to Burn off of Self Titled. I'm I'm really surprised about Tim McGraw. Um, we've got That's, it was like her first hit, right? She used to play that on like. When she would open up for people in bigger shows in the Nashville area and stuff. Yeah, right? my my sister saw her for like seven dollars opening for uh, Rascal Flats or something. Yeah, I think she would just go play the most like country friendly. So it was like, oh, this little girl's naming Tim McGraw by name in a, a song that's very easy to listen to. I don't know, <laughs> just like. <laughs> then we got uh, Fearless and You Belong with Me off of Fearless, which are yeah. great yeah. picks. Yeah. Very proud of us. Thanks, bud. I'm proud of us, too. Uh, <laughs> speak Now is back to December and mine. Yeah. Again, yeah, yeah. bangers. Uh, Red, we've got 22. Wait, and did, did we left Love Story off of Fearless? You know, okay. So That's I rough, need to talk dude. about Love Story because... I think, I think you need to explain yourself. Zach and I used to cover that back when, like... I mean, like, right after the album came out. It was before pop punk bands were making it into all of their things, before Freshman Five did it with their five-part harmonies live, killing it every night. Um, yeah, we covered that a lot, and I love that song. And also, my sister and I played um, Best Day or The Best Day at my grandfather's funeral. Ooh. And so that song is also super special to me as well. Yeah. And again, it was back before I was listening to like these full records. Um, but both of those songs are super special and kind of break my heart that they're not on here. But some something funny about Love Story is Zach was always the lead guitarist because I can just kind of barely do rhythm. But he let me take the lead part on that song and I couldn't make the shape with my hand. So I just detuned the high E string in order to not have to do the weird hand shape. <laughs> so, like, Ooh, there you had go. to like rig the guitar up to make it easier. Uh, mu- musicianship. Is right. It is. <laughs> is, it, it's, is it? Is it not? Just took it a whole step down. That's um, right. But yeah, kind of kind of a crime that Love Story is not on here, especially, oh my God, how she performed it. In the 1989 world tour, f- dude, just brought a whole new life it's to that It's still song. your like, favorite movie, I think. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's your favorite movie? Citizen Kane? What about you, Tom? Uh, the 1989 world tour. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. I need, Shawshank I'm, Redemption takes a, a long backseat to that one. But, yeah, I'm going to have to go with the 1989 world tour movie. <laughs> yeah. And then Ace Ventura, uh, When Nature Pet Calls. Pet Detective. No, no, When Nature Calls. Idiot. You will bite your fucking <laughs> tongue. <laughs> no, you're right. When Nature Calls is so good. the And I, we don't have to just recount bits, but I do want to do exactly that for this one. Uh, he's The camera's on a tight shot of him, and he's driving, and he's bouncing in the car. <laughs> you think he's, like, in the bush. And then it zooms out, and the car is just on pavement, and he's just like, creepy as hell bouncing around in the driver's seat. That slaughtered my like brain and my whole sense of being or existence <laughs> when I saw that for the first time. It's good, dude. It's really good. And then good. he talks with his butt too. It's just 
Yeah. Good stuff. I feel like his character was much more uh, reformed by the second movie, for sure. Ooh, interesting. Sounds like we got an episode coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Just kidding. So Reputation is difficult. Lots of good songs, lots yeah. of not so great songs, which well, is why... Never, I, and Never Ever Getting Back Together and uh, 22 Off Red, which is pretty much the two radio hits. Um, and then, I don't know if we had mentioned that. And then we had Wildest Dreams and... What was yes. Shake Off 1989? And Shake It Off. Shake It Off. It's a bop. I don't it's think anybody would deny that it's a in barrel of bops that 1989. Um, reputation. Yeah, things here change, we are. right? We are here. Um, things are different now. She swore on this record, and she sings about getting drunk in every song. All of a sudden, it's hey like man, welcome she... to New York. Am I right? Help, right? <laughs> It'll do things. Next episode or next album will be about her blowing coke off the toilet. Hey seat. Tom. Yes, sir. I'm at a dive bar on the east side. Where are you at? <laughs> I get, in the show notes, we're, <laughs> I'll put a photo of the inspirational um, yeah. poster I made for Pat. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. Reminiscentpodcast.com slash episode slash 114, 114. Uh, yeah, Reputation's hard because there's some songs that I really love, but I kind of just wish I could pick another one off of 1989. And I was torn between two. And while I think I enjoy listening to Ready For It more... I think I'm going to put Delicate. Ooh. Because, I mean, it's a you really good son song. son of a f***ing The music video is fun, and there it are is. two of them. It's very fun. There's one, it's like a vertical video where she's dancing around in a field, and she's holding the camera, but then all of a sudden she lets go of the camera, and you're like, what? Has it been attached to her the whole time? Pretty cool. The other video was a lot of fun, but... When I was making the playlist for our wedding, I, I've been meaning to talk about this on the show because it f***ing... Oh, sh- We get a bonus round. We, we get two, round. yeah. Well, this boils my blood to this day because I put Delicate on our wedding playlist and I told Megan, I want to dance with you to this song. And with no knowledge of that, Delicate comes on. I start walking over to her because I want to dance with her. And her dad, who... Uh, there was a fight between families the day before the wedding, so I was not. There's super a wedding. Right. There's a few wedding episodes you can go back and go <laughs> yourself there for. So I was not particularly pleased with um, him at that at this point. But he's into swing dancing, and he thinks this is the perfect song to swing dance with Megan to, which is like the most inappropriate song in the world for swing dancing, and it's also like the one song, the one. F- song that I wanted to dance with Megan to and uh, they he danced with her just super swing dancing to delicate are you fucking high I'm not sure how that first uh, sound of her voice makes me be like oh yeah let's swing, let's swing away. <laughs> I know yeah. I know so like, like I, I just sat there and watched them dance through this song that I like specifically said I want you on this one song if nothing else so that's why it's going to be. He was the team <laughs> captain and you were on the bleachers, my boy. I know. <laughs> God. So uh, you're going delicate. Yes. Which means I'm going to have to be very excited about the bonus round we get and just go ahead and pick end game, rip the band aid off. Ew, dude. You, your face, you fing <laughs> asshole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that um, song sorry, that guy sucks, dude. You suck. This album <laughs> sucks, so we're all dumb. Um, th- this is my least favorite album for sure. Yes. Well, it might not be. It might be. Eh, it doesn't matter. Endgame, mostly because my wife has a set of like four or five songs she plays after so many glasses of wine, and this is one of them, and oh, I've grown okay. to like it, so you can eat <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and it kind of bops, so fuck off. Well, I don't know. Ready for it's great, but if I'm going to the theme of my own mixtape here, I don't know if I want to have uh, ready for it be at the end of the thing and heading into the my final track sure and game's kind of a nice uh put i'm this is i'm trying to put together a nice little mixtape here tom would you just give me some freaking room, please <laughs> all right so let's do it uh two bonus rounds two picks each no let's do it let's do it all right i have to go i have to go with style off of 1989 you f- kid i Damn, i this is know. getting easily worse Okay, well then I'm going to take Love Story off Fearless, you old prick. Was going to pick it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead then. Okay, I, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, 
Ooh, you can you have a steal. You have a steal. Oh, I can't steal, but I don't want to. I'm gonna go with the way I loved you off of Fearless. Mm, well, in the interest of being a nice guy, you can keep delicate, you little <laughs> And I am gonna go ahead and end my mixtape with uh all too well. Ooh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Dude. How's it feel? As- yeah, aside feel? from the awful pick of Endgame, that's a very good uh, couple of EPs I think we've EPs both done there. well here today. And would you quit bashing Endgame? It's <laughs> one of the best songs on the record, considering half of it's booty. Uh, King of Prussia. <laughs> All, right. All right. So that's right. that's it. We'll, we'll make that's some that. graphics Sorry for the to show everyone notes. who has asked us to do actual versions of this uh, show that we've actually grown to enjoy doing for all of you. Uh, we'll get to that list later, but we've got some fun <laughs> things coming up. Tom has been very busy and stressed lately, so we figured we'd do a fun one. Slash, I don't want to throw him under the bus. I wanted to do this too. Also, our Taylor Swift episodes do fantastically. So, <laughs> right. uh, there's nothing wrong with going back to the well a little bit. Just keep um, milking that cow. Fun. Right. That's right. Um, I think my wife's going to leave for work soon, so I want to go make sure the dog doesn't eat any more of our shoes. And uh, yes, it's give me been a, fun. give me a quick uh, quick song of the week. Quick song of the week. What is this? John. 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 I'll go first. I'll go with Tell Me It's Over by Avril Lavigne. Whoa. The album is coming out soon. And this is kind of like a doo y kind of vibe. And it gets me really excited for her album that's coming out. Um, she did just release a new song. I think it was yesterday. Haven't listened to it yet. But, yeah, that's that's my song of the week. In the spirit of Ron Carnage's publishing date being set and the pre-orders going out this week... Um, again, at underscore Reminiscent FM, keep an eye out. Uh, I'm going to go with the Leon Bridges tune. Ooh. The bet ain't worth the hand. He's okay. just, the dude's a star. What can you say? Smooth. Very smooth. Okay. Goes down easy every time if we're quoting Ron Burgundy, which apparently there's a Ron Burgundy, Burgundy podcast out nowadays. I haven't listened to it, but oh, geez. man, podcasts, I, I hear they're getting pretty big. People <laughs> seem to enjoy them. So uh, I certainly enjoy doing this one with you. And uh, until next week, my good man, I love you very much. Love you too, man. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Guys, I cannot believe I'm finally saying this, but Ron Carnage, the Thinker Boy, is available for pre order right now. Go to whoisroncarnage.com slash buy, and it'll take you to the Amazon page where you can pre-order the ebook. Uh, you'll be able to order the paperback as soon as it's available, March 15th. Tweet at the show at underscore reminisce FM. Let me know if you think I should just start a dedicated Taylor Swift podcast. I'm starting to think that I should. All right, love you guys. Bye. Bye.